Okay, so mitosis and cytokinesis, uh, quickly uh, reviewing what we went over in class and making sure that everyone has the opportunity to catch up with any details. In the cell cycle, as we discussed already, the key components of the cell cycle are G1, S, G2, uh, and, and the M phase, and the M phase consists of mitosis and cytokinesis. Now the key here is that you remember G0 is an option but is left for certain cells that are either going to end up dying or they're just never going to go through the cell cycle again. Uh, so in general G cells that are, that are doing their normal everyday uh, functions and they're just not going into mitosis yet are going to be in the G1 phase. So let's move on. Cells that have distinct uh, cells have distinct phases in growth reproduction as we discussed uh, just a moment ago they have normal functions and we talked about white blood cells and their function and we talked about uh, different epithelial cells that, that uh, protect us from the outside we've talked about neurons that, that work on controlling motor functions and etc uh, so cells go through their normal functions on a day-to-day -day basis, they're not necessarily going to go through cell division, but we're going to focus on cells that are going to do cell division in this in this particular uh, notes set of notes. So here we have again the cell cycle has four main stages. In the gap one, as we've said before, it's carrying out its normal functions, and here during this stage of the cell's life, in these stages can can be different lengths, uh, but in the gap one, it's going to do its normal functions, and or it's going to prepare and grow and get bigger and bigger and, and get ready to divide. This signals other cells signal cells to do, the, to be ready to divide, and there's different all kinds of different input that that signals a cell to divide. One major one is as it grows big, as it grows, and not all cells grow uh, to at, at the same rate. And different signals tell the cell to grow or not. Um, so, but when a cell grows big enough, it's going to start to divide, and that goes back to our our discussion about uh, volume surface area to volume ratios and how important that is to the function of a cell. You have to have a large surface area to volume ratio in order for that cell to function normally. So it's when a cell gets bigger and bigger, at some point it's gonna get it's gonna get the trigger for it to start to, to go through cell division. Now once there are checkpoints throughout here and we discussed that in the in the in the cell cycle phase. So I don't really want to spend too much time on the cell cycle since you have a whole video on the cell cycle already. But when there is a checkpoint here that checks and see if everything's fine and it goes through DNA synthesis. Remember that before the cell goes through mitosis, if it's doing mitosis, then it has to go through DNA synthesis first. So everything's doubled. And let's do some math really quickly and think about what this means. So there's in a normal cell, you have 23 pairs of uh, inside the nucleus. You have 23 pairs of, of chromosomes. Now that means one from dad and you have one from mom for each chromosome number, and there's 23 of them. So there's 23 of them, that's one, this is chromosome one, and there'll be chromosome two, and you'll have again the same thing, one from mom and one from dad. Now, in the normal phase, in gap one phase, before you synthesize them, that's what you have. You have one molecule, remember what this means, this means a, really it's two molecules of DNA, hydrogen bonded to one another. So these two molecules of DNA can, are what we're talking about when we're talking about this chromosome here. This chromosome is this. Now, when before synthesis, when it's doing its normal function, the DNA is unwound. So if you looked at a microscope at a, at a nucleus, you would see kind of a just kind of almost an ink spot. Even if you even if you dyed it, you really wouldn't be able to say to see inside a nucleus, inside a cell, you wouldn't be able to see these chromosomes because they're all unwound in sort of a spaghetti-like fashion with, with the double helixes opened up and transcription and translation occurring. 
because the cell is doing its normal functions, which, as we know, is trans in the, as far as the DNA is concerned, is being transcribed and then translated as the mRNA, le mRNA leaves the nucleolus or the nucleus and it and enters the cytoplasm and finds the ribosomes that are waiting there for it. So we've gone through that, and hopefully you realize that, that this this nucleus that you see here that's all unwound is doing that on normal in a normal day-to-day -day function here in gap one. But then as the cell goes and starts to divide, it goes into S phase, the cell starts to divide. And that division means something. It 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 that division is gonna mean that this this DNA here is gonna open up, right? So it's gonna have kind of a, a big It's going to open up, and it's going to have that replication bubble that we've discussed before in DNA replication. And you're going to have DNA polymerase coming down here and making an, a, a new strand. And it's going to make this new strand all along here throughout the bubble. And it's going to happen in the other strand as well. So in the end, you're going to have two strands of two new copies of DNA once you're done replicating. So as the DNA replication keeps going, goes in both directions, in this direction and that direction, on both of these, this DNA, this double helix, turns out to make something like this. One old strand and one new one. That's semi-conservative. We call that semi-conservative. So this semi-conservative replication, what it's going to happen is, is this thing, uh, this strand here is replicated, and you have a, two copies, right? And remember, they're complementary. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about the A is going to be attached to a T. Remember, we talked about that over and over again in DNA. And then C is going to be bonded to G, and again in DNA. And this is going to happen all along this, this strand as the copies are made, right? So each of these is going to make, each one of these strands is going to make a whole new DNA molecule. So this, from this 3' end to this 5' end, and from this 5' end to this 3' end, this is called a chromosome. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make two copies of this chromosome, and, and that's what's happening during the S phase, during this DNA replication, right, and during this S phase. You're going to make two copies, and they're going to stick together in, by the centromere. They're going to keep they're going to keep stuff together, and you're going to have one copy here with one old strand and one new one, and one old strand and one new one, and we call that semi-conservative replication, right? Semi-conservative DNA replication. So you have one old strand is combined with one new one. Remember that. That's very important. And the centromere is what's holding it together. So this is the chromosome we see. This piece here that you see blocked off this is the chromosome you see when you look under the microscope because only after s phase and the the chromosome is condensed during the beginning of prophase do you actually see a chromosome before then remember what you're looking at when you're looking underneath the microscope at the at the nucleus is just kind of a dark darkened little area you don't see the individual chromosomes because they haven't been wound up. They haven't been tightly packed for moving as they need to be when they're going through mitosis. So when you see a chromosome like this, remember what you're looking at is one, one, one DNA molecule that is, that's, that's old and one DNA molecule that's new. It's all wound up, and they're all wrapped up, okay? So I'm just drawing it this way, but they're wrapped up in each of these, right? And so when you're looking at this, you're not, you shouldn't be thinking about somehow this thing is a, something new. This is just the DNA molecules that you've created during, during uh, you know, uh, DNA replication, right? And you have your centromere here. Let me change the color of this so that you can see it better. You have your centromere here in the center holding this molecule together so what we're talking about again is you have this 
duplicated one old strand with new strand double helix which I ba drew badly here another double helix on this side being held together by a centromere but these are all wound up around histones and we'll look at that in a minute and as they're all wound up around histones they form these condensed bodies that we call chromosomes but it's still the same DNA it's still that sequence A T G C T G T T and on this side is the complementary strand of T uh, T, T, C, C, G, whatever, right? So these are all complement complementing each other all the way down from 3 prime to 5 prime on the blue and from 5 prime to 3 prime, prime on the red. Okay, so remember that as we move forward that this chromosome is actually DNA wound up around histones. So the, the key here is that when we're talking about mitosis, we're talking about four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And each stage, each stage makes sense. So let's talk about the stages in general before we go in and look at the specifics that we've already looked at in class. So in prophase, the key here is that, and I want to make an analogy to moving your home. So let's say you're, let's say that you want to move your house and and you're going to move to this new home and and you want it to have be as simple and as straightforward as possible not forget anything not forget your cat or your dog or your underwear or whatever it is you're moving so let's say you ha you have your house and you're moving to the new house so before you move one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to pack right and you're going to pack so this is your house and and the other one let's say this is this is the nucleus. So let's just compare, let me compare some. This is the nucleus here. And the other one's your house, right? So you have your house and you're going to pack it. Well, the first thing you're going to do before you move it, before you go try to move to another home, you have to pack all your stuff. You're not going to take one piece of paper at a time and move it to your new house. You're going to pack everything in boxes and then you're going to put the boxes in a car. And then you're going to move the car somewhere else. So you're, you're during prophase in the nuclei in the at your home is the first step. Prophase is your first step, and nuclei the home is your first step. So the first thing you got to do is you got if you're going to move is you're going to pack, and that means put everything away, right? And then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to start putting it in the car, put everything in the car, get it out of the house, put it in the truck, before you move it to the new house, right? So there's two things you got to get you got to get done. You got to you got to move the stuff out of where it is. You got to pack it and then move it where, where it goes. That way you're keeping track of everything when you're packing it. And then you move it in the car, get it out of the house. Or in prophase, you're kind of doing that. You're taking the DNA and you're condensing, you're wrapping it up, wrapping it up and up and up. Like, you're, like when you're braiding hair or when you, you know, uh, as we discuss all the different examples of this, you're taking and you're winding it around these histones, these proteins called histones. And so you're packing it by, by condensing. We call it condensing, right? condensing the 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 DNA all right so that's key and the second thing you got to do is you got to get rid of the nucleus so you get rid of the nucleus and by getting rid of the nucleus what happens is that the 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 chromosomes then can you can move them freely and get them on on each side of the of the cell before you you divide the cell so you're getting it you're getting it out of the house per se all right in metaphase, you're lining it up, and that's pretty much where this movement kind of, this the movement uh, example kind of, it goes away. But it's a nice, it's a nice beginning to understand that you need to be able to, uh, to condense or pack up the DNA in order to, be able to move it and move it without losing anything. So when we're talking about making that. That chromosome, you're condensing it, wrapping it all up, just like you saw in the other picture, and you're you're kind of, and there's two of them, of course, and they're connected by a centromere, right? And that that chromosome then can now be easily moved from one place to the other. Well, before you move it out, you have to line everything up, you know. So you have to order things. You want all the kitchen in the in the in the case of the home, you want all the kitchen boxes in the, in one place, and all the bedroom boxes in another. Well, in metaphase, you're kind of doing that. You're organizing them all. You're putting them all, all the chromosomes down what's called the metaphase plate. So here you're organizing. All right, so if this were moving a house, the first phase is packing, all right? And that's still what you're doing here. You're packing or condensing, right, the, 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 new, the DNA. The next phase you're organizing, you're putting them all on the metaphase plate. Finally, you start to move 
the and you start to move it. Remember, you got rid of the nucleus, right? So you got them out of that house that it, they were in before. And when you organize them, they're all lined up on the plate. And in anaphase, you start to move. You start your move. You start to move them on each opposite end of the cell. And then the final stage of your of of mitosis is once they're they've been moved, then you have to re, you're rebuilding the house. You have to build the house around them, because unlike your stuff that you're moving from one house to the other, these these chromosomes have to be moved, and then we the cell builds a house around it or completes building the house. So that you finish. The house around them and in this case finish the cell and that means doing the next phase after this cytokinesis and cytokinesis is is the is the pinching off and completion of the of the of the cell division so here's the, let's look at prophase and make sure we understand what's going on the first, the chromosomes condense, and there's the condensing, right? Remember, that's just packing. So here we're packing everything away. You're winding it around histones is what you're doing, okay? So you're packing up the, the DNA into, into things called chromosomes, right? The chromosome is the DNA molecule, uh, but there's two of them, so they're two sister chromatids. We just call them sister chromatids. They're sister chromatids. They're identical. So the, the copies that we made that form the new chromosome, they're called sister chromatids. And they're more visible. Before, well, all we could see, if you stained it, all you see is a, is, a, is a dark nucleus that contained all the DNA opened up in a chromatin, so it's unwound. When, you, when the chromosomes condense so that you can see individual chromosomes, that's at the beginning of prophase. Okay, so that's really important. That's the packing phase. The nuclear envelope disappearing is when the nucleus then, uh, the, the, the membrane, the nuclear membrane starts to break down allowing, taking the, the chromosomes out of that confined space. So that's like moving the boxes out of the old house. Not yet, we haven't moved them to the new house. They just got them out of the whole old house onto the front yard. So then the centrioles have separated and taken positions in opposite sides of the poles. Now, if you think about it, the centrioles are like a fishing reel. If you've ever been fishing or if you've seen someone fishing, the, the spindle fibers are the fishing, the fishing line. Right, that's the line that connects the fishing pole, the fishing reel that's on the pole to the fish. And the whole point is to move the fish from the water to your hand so that you can then have dinner. So you take that fishing pole and you cast the line out. Once the end of that fishing pole, uh, that fishing line finds a fish, then you can draw it in. You, the, the reel can be wound up and you can draw the fish in. Easy as pie, right? So when you're talking about the, when the nuclear envelope disappears, the centrioles, the centrioles are your, are your fishing, your fishing gear, right? Your centrioles are your fishing uh, spool that you're turning to bring in, the bring in the fishing line. Okay, enough with the with the analogies, and let's just be clear that the centrioles are the thing that pulls in the the, the spindle fibers. They give tension in the spindle fibers and pull on the chromosome. Well, how how would the pulling on the spindle fiber pull on the chromosome? Because the spindle fibers, ultimately, not in pro prophase, they in prophase are just kind of coming out of the centrioles, and they're moving towards the center of the cell. Uh, but eventually, the spindle fibers will attach to the centrosome. And that's one of those red light words, right? The, you know, like chromosome, chromatid, and, chrom and, sister, and uh, uh, chromosome, sister chromatid, right? And chromatin. So those are, you know, those are three words. They're very similar sounding and and but have very different definitions. Centriole and centrosome are very close to one another. Centriole is that fishing is that fishing spool where you're going to wind this the spindle fibers up on. So the key is that you're you're thinking that when you see the word centriole, that you're not getting that confused with centrosome. It's very important. Centrosome is the, is the piece in, be, in between the two sister chromatids that the spindle fibers will eventually attach to. So this is clearly, uh, just, just to clarify this, this is a deep double helix DNA molecule and they wind around the histones and the histones get winding around the chromatin 
and only when they're super condensed do you see this chromosome. So when you're looking at any chromosome, there is a centromere here. Someone said that they didn't see a centromere. Well, it's there. It's this centromere is what's holding these two uh, chromosomes together. When, we, when you're talking about this, this molecule, this is after synthesis. So that's why you have two copies. And it's after it's all been wound around these histones. And of course, here is prophase in all its glory. You have the center, the centrosomes, right? They look like fishing reels, don't they? They're, they look like they'd wind up some something. And they move, these two move over here on this end. These stay here, so they're opposite side. They'll end up, this one will end, these two will end up on this side. And these two will be on opposite sides of the cell pulling on the, on the chromosome. Now here you see in the center of this, this is the nucleus and it's all been dyed a different color. So you see that the, the spindle fibers are all in green and the blue chromosomes are all condensed. And there's 23 pairs of them. And remember the 23 pairs all have been duplicated so they have two sister chromatids at this stage. But you see that they're all very condensed. You can actually see this is one, this is another. You wouldn't be able to see that if it wasn't prophase because they wouldn't be condensing. They're just beginning to condense. In metaphase, what's interesting is that they line up and they line up to get organized. So you're organizing, just like I said, when that when we're trying to move things and we're putting things out in the front yard, you're gonna put all the kitchen stuff together, all the bedroom stuff together, and all the bathroom stuff together, so you know where it's gonna go when you get to the new house. Well, that's what they're that's what's happening in metaphase. They're all lining up on the middle on the metaphase plate. So when they separate in each direction, the two sister chromatids end up moving exactly where they need to move. And you're not mixing up. You don't get, you don't end up with, with uh, two uh, or four copies of number one over here, uh, and four copies of number of uh, number two over here. You end up with uh, two copies, one from mom, one from dad over here, and one from mom, one from dad over here, and the, and the other cell. So the, the, it's important that everything stay organized. That's why lining it up on the on the metaphase plate makes so much sense. So chromosomes line up across the middle of the cell and the spindle fibers connect to the centromere just like we said a moment ago and each sister chromatid is pulled towards the opposite end of the pole. This is what it looks like. It's actually one of my favorite parts of, of, of mitosis. It's the easiest one in my opinion to, to definitely identify. All, this, all, the, all the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. The two centrioles are on, the, on each side. Everybody's ready to pull apart. They haven't been pulled apart yet. But they're, they're attached here to the, at the center, at the centrosome, and these two sister chromatids will be moved apart. As soon as they get moved apart, this becomes a chromosome, and this becomes a chromosome. So that this is chromosome 1 from mom, this, one will, this side will have chromosome 1 from mom, and this side will have chromosome 1 from mom. And this, one, this side will be, have chromosome uh, 2 from mom, and uh, from dad, or this, I'm sorry, this is chromosome 1 from mom. This side will have chromosome 1 from dad, and this side will have chromosome 1 from dad. Because remember, this is chromosome one from dad. This is chromosome one from mom. All 28 of them, there's two of everything. One from, one from their mother and one from their father. So they're lined up here along the middle and they're ready to divide, but they haven't divided yet. And so this is, this is the metaphase section of mitosis. Anaphase is, is when they're actually starting to divide. Now you're, now you're moving them. Now they're in the truck and they're on their way to the new house. One set stays where it is, and the uh, one set goes to one house, and one set goes to the other. But the bottom lines are getting moved to to a new house, so they're going to be moved to opposite sides of the cell. So the centromeres, are, the centromeres start pulling. They start pull, uh, pulling apart the sister chromatids until they split. And once you split, they keep pulling them towards each opposite end of the cell to the different poles of the cell. The sister chromatids separate, becoming individual chromosomes. As soon as they separate, they become individual chromosomes because, remember, they were copies of one another. So they were a chromosome to begin with. Then they were copied. They stuck together. At that point, we just called them something different. We called them sister chromatids. We called them that so we don't get confused. And then when they're split apart, well, they're back to being chromosomes. They used to be sister chromatids, but now they're chromosomes. And their, se their separated sister chromatids uh, move to opposite sides of the cell. Mitosis divides the cell nucleus in four phases. Again, it keeps it, we, that's, uh, that's on almost every slide of the, of, the, of the PowerPoint. And during anaphase, the sister chromatids separate to opposite sides of the cell. So you have one copy of each of the, 20, of the 23 
uh, pairs are over here, or they actually, excuse me, you have, uh, yes, yeah, so you have your 23 pairs of chromosomes over here, and you have 23 pairs of chromosomes over here. So you have one from mom, one from dad over here, one from mom, one from dad over here. That's because you make copies of them. Let's move forward. Now, see, you see them here. You see them, how they're being dragged to each opposite end of the cell. The centromeres, or the centrosomes uh, are, are pulling on these chromosomes and separating them from the center. So the anaphase is key. All right, so telophase. Now they're moved to the opposite side of the center. What do you have to do? Well, if you're going to have two new cells, you're going to need a lot of proteins. You're going to need a lot of building materials. You have to rebuild the two cells because right now you got this one cell without a nuclear membrane. You have uh, all kinds of the member, the outer, the plasma membrane is kind of pinching off a little bit, maybe just a little dent in it. But you have to, you need proteins. You need to start building things. So you need the information that's in DNA. So the very first thing you do when you get the boxes into the new house is you unpack. And as soon as you unpack that DNA, it can start doing transcription and then translation. And then you can, that makes the proteins you need for those proteins then to go on and do what they have to do uh, to build the two new cells. Chromosomes can, are consisting of a single chromatid uncoil, all right? So they uncoil. All the chromosomes uncoil. The nuclear envelope forms around the, the chromosomes at each pole of the cell. And that's where each side of the cell, you have one side over here that has, that has uh, a nucleus. They start to form a nucleus over here. You start to form a nucleus over here. So as soon as you see that, you know you're in telophase. You're going to know you have two. You, you haven't quite built, them, built the, the nuclear envelope completely, but it should be there depending on how late in telophase you are. But you have two new nuclei forming very clearly in the, in the cell. And the spindle fibers that were in between, all these spindle fibers that were connecting the two, they start to break down. They start to break down and go away. So it's not going to be as green They're, or whatever color it is that you're using to dye the, the molecules with. And cytokinesis begins. You start to pinch off. And this is what it looks like. You know, you have your... your your, uh, your centrioles on each end, you're pulling the, you pull the chromosomes to each end of the, nu of the cell. You're starting to form a nucleus, uh, an envelope, a nuclear envelope or a nuclear membrane around the chromosomes. And at that point, you see them here, there's the blue, they're starting to form around. You'll see that they've unpacked. You see, can't see the, the very various chromosomes the way you should. You see just this kind of diffuse DNA material because they're unwrapping and they're allowing you to, to make copies of the DNA. You're not gonna make copies, excuse me, but uh, you start to make, uh, transcribe and then translate the, uh, the genes so that you can produce the proteins that you need to rebuild this cell and make it start functioning the way it should be. But you see in the middle, it's almost completely pinched off because this, this, is, where, this is where the metaphase place used to be and now it's all pinched off and, and here, is the nucleus on one side, here's the nucleus on the other. And cytokinesis is just when you're forming the cleavage furrow, that pinching off part is called a cleavage furrow, and it just pinches off and finally becomes two new cells. Not too difficult, really, to see. Uh, and in a drawing, it looks like this. You have the, the nucleus is reforming here, the nucleus is reforming here, the centrioles are here. You have one set of centrioles on each side. And here in the center, you have all your chromosomes, right? And you have one, see, I notice that they're one. They're not, they're not forming those, that tumble connected by a centromere, that double connected by a centromere. There's just a single chromosome. Now, I said a single, but I need you to remember something. There's 23 pairs. And remember, we duplicated it, right? So let me go, let me take this moment to think about, for let you think about what we're talking about. We started with 23 pairs. Well, how many chromosomes is that? That means you had one, one chromosome number one, another chromosome number one. You had a chromosome number two, you had another chromosome number two. Now they're single, they're single here, right? So you have 40, 23 pairs. So how many is that total? Well, I hope you said 46. So when you when you've uh, when you've dupli I, I'm sorry, 46 total chromosomes, 46 chromosomes, 46 chromosomes. 
So 23 pairs equals 46 total chromosomes, right? So when we've divided it, when we duplicate it in synthesis, we duplicate it times two, right? That's what duplication means. You end up with 92 chromosomes. So you started with 23 pairs. That's here. There's 23 pairs. You ended up with 40... And because you have 23 pairs, there's 46 of them, one from mom and one from dad, two of them, times 23, that's 46. You made copies of it in synthesis phase. They gave you 92 chromosomes. But then you divided it into these two cells. These 92 chromosomes got separated, one, one set in this cell, one set in this nucleus. And when you do take 92 and divide it in half, you get back to 46. 46 in each of these. 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs, two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, all the way to 23. All right. All right, let's move on. And this is what it looks like under the microscope with special uh, fluorescent microscopy. You see that the nucleus is completely unwound and it's doing its thing. The DNA is doing its thing. It's making trans it's doing transcription. Here's another one on this side doing transcription. The, mem the, the two cells are almost completely pinched, uh, uh, completely separated by now. You just have this little bit left to, to separate. And you have a nucleus in each one. You have 23 pairs of chromosomes in each one, or 46 if this is a human cell. And the centrioles are in there, and everybody's happy. Okay? In the plant cell is a little bit different because in the plant cell, remember you have your cell wall, and after you have your two nuclei reformed, you can't just pinch off. So what happens is that you get in the center this production, this buildup, slow buildup, because now the DNA is unwound. It's make it's able to make things, and one of the first things it makes is a, is a cell wall, and be separating these two, and so you end up with one cell here, and another cell here, separated by a cell wall. Let's take a look at what that looks like. A better drawing of it is here. So here's the spindle equator, and where, where the uh, the uh, metaphase plate was. Here's your DNA. Here's your DNA, and your two new nuclei. They haven't unformed, unwound yet. Here's they are. Here they are unwound. Here you and once you are, they're unwound, you start to produce proteins. They start to build, start to bring together the vesicles that are necessary to build this 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 cell wall. And we call this a cell plate. It starts to build a cell wall here. And finally, you have two, two cell walls, one on this side and one on this side, separating these two. But they are still able to communicate. Remember that. We're, they still have pores that allow them to communicate. But they are separated by that cell wall. So to emphasize that each, each cell type is separate, each uh, skin cell has two, it can, it can take up to two weeks. Every two weeks it does mitosis. A red blood cell every four months, three to four months. In a liver cell, you have cells dividing every three to five hundred days. So their lifespans are fairly are fairly varied, right? So you have some of these cells are duplicating every two weeks. Some cells are duplicating every four months. Some cells every three to five hundred days. Some cells every four to five days. And in the case of, of intestinal cells, muscle cells, they can take 16 years to divide. Brain cells don't... Don't divide much at all after you're an adult. So you have to you have to recognize that each cell tissue is going to have do different rates of mitosis, different rates of cells or cell cycles are going to go through them at different speeds depending on the need for that particular cell type to replicate and to make to reproduce, um, to to replace dying old cells, to to uh, replace injured cells or or damaged cells, or to grow to grow bigger. Because those are the functions of mitosis in the eukaryotic cell, right? To grow, to replace damaged tissue, or replace dead or dying tissue. So, or in 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 it's, in some cases, it could be a form of of, of of reproduction if it's asexual reproduction. In the case of some plants that do asexual reproduction, uh, in the case of of starfish, if you cut a starfish in half, they'll grow into two new ones. Um, in the case of bacteria, they do asexual reproduction, so you have to consider that. Now, when you're talking with uh, surface area to volume ratios, you have to make, remember that one of the triggers for to the trigger cell division is when the, vo the, the cell gets so big that the surface area to volume ratio uh, 
requires it to be divi to divide in half in order to come back to a large surface area to volume ratio so it's able to do its job. You understand diffusion now. You understand osmosis. For water or 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 uh, nutrients or particles to diffuse, or a gas like oxygen or carbon dioxide to diffuse across this distance, it would take too much time for it to do its to do the cell functions efficiently. So it needs you need to to reduce the distance inside the cell, the volume, so that when there is osmosis or diffusion occurring, these processes can hurt, can happen relatively quickly rather than the long time it would take if the surface area to volume ratio of a big cell were to be considered. Now one way we can get around that if we think about nerve cells, because nerve cells are really long, one way we can get around that is we can change the shape of the cell. So the cell, like a neuron, is very long. Some may be, you know, might be a, a meter long or so. Uh, so these neurons, being, being so long, have to be able to, to still deal with that surface area to volume ratio problem. And so the way they deal with it is they make their, 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 the cell with the, for that length that's very long, they make it very, very tiny. So the surface area is large compared to the volume. So you see how the volume is very small, even though the surface area is very big. And here at the cell body, you have a surface area to volume ratio that's, that's, that's smaller, but it's big, it's big enough that it can function where this is very long, but it's so narrow that, it, that it's, things are able to diffuse and, and, and osmosis is able to occur still efficiently. So here's the telomere, right? And we have our telomere and our centromere. The cent this is another, another image of, this, of the chromosome. So this is an issue, and the issue is that when DNA gets replicated, when DNA does, when it goes through mitosis, actually, when DNA goes through mitosis, the problem is that every time DNA is replicated, you lose a little bit of the information at the very tips, here at the tip here and here at the tip down here. That would be a problem if there were genes there. If your gene for your heart were right here, that would be, a, um, and let's say a major gene for your heart is right here, that would be a real problem if you cut that out. So what cells have evolved to be able to do is they develop these things called telomeres, these regions of DNA. Remember, this is DNA. Telomeres aren't really a thing. They're just a sequence of DNA, repeating DNA sequence on each of the chromosomes that are, they just repeat. And the whole function of them is to be able to be cut away, to be cut away without being able to lose it because of the normal function of, of mitosis, being able to lose some of the ends without it affecting the genes in the center. So the genes can continue to function without the ends, without the ends being damaged, or without the, with the, I mean, the ends can be damaged without the, the genes being damaged. So the, fun, the normal functioning of the cell continues. Okay. This is really important, the idea that this telom these telomeres exist, and we think that this is one of the major causes of aging, right? So one of the major causes of aging is every time you do a DNA replication, that cell gets a little older, that DNA gets a little older. And if it's, once it gets, by older I mean shorter, and if it gets short enough, it's gonna start impacting the genes themselves. So we said this different tissues do mitosis at different rates. So different organs then are gonna get older at different speeds. And the whole goal of mitosis and cytokinesis and something that you really have to keep in mind is that we're talking about com two genetically identical, completing two, identi making two identi genetically identical daughter cells. So by keeping, by doing this mitosis, this thing called mitosis, what we're doing is we're creating two identical cells. There's no difference between cell one and cell two. So every cell in your body has the same DNA. Every time it did mitosis from that single cell, when you were conceived as, if, as, as uh, when you were first conceived by your mother and father in your mother's womb, to where you are now, to a trillion cells, every cell is, gen is, is identical in its genetic makeup. Mitosis creates identical cells. So it begs the question, how do we get different tissue types? How do you get a hand versus an eyeball versus a brain? And that's because different, we can turn different genes on in different tissues. 
So the cells in your eyeball have a certain set of genes that are on that produce certain proteins that make an eye, right? Where the cells in your knee have a different set of genes on, and certainly the genes for eyeball off, right? And so that it, they produce a knee or bone or muscle or a tendon or blood vessels or blood cells or whatever genes they, ha they happen to be turned into. So once they're, once they're specialized, once they get those genes turned on and off, they, they, stay, they stay being that tissue the rest of their existence, right? So that's a, this is a key, po a key part of understanding how is it we go from just making copies of cells to making real different tissues. Tissue cells become specialized. And once they become specialized, they become organs and those tissues and the organs only work as those tissues. So you can't take a stomach and transplant it somewhere and make it, and naturally it would be anything else but a stomach. Now that being said, our present, our present technology allows us to take those cells that we take, those stomach cells or neuron cells or whatever, and we could take, you know, there are limitations. It's all very, very technical, and there's different uh, limitations depending on what we're talking about it. But in, in basically what we're able to do is take any normal adult specialized cell, and we could take it back to an unspecialized state or to a less specialized state. We're still I, there's still trouble taking a specialized cell all the way back to its its uh, its stem cell state, but we're able to take some some cells that have been slightly specialized and take them back to the stem cell stage where the stem cell is a cell that can become anything. It's just a regular. It's a cell that's a general a general cell, not a special cell. And once it, that general cell, then we can induce it to become theoretically we want to be able to induce it to become whatever we want. So if you come in uh, to a doctor's office in, in 2050, theoretically, you can give them some of your tissue, right? Hopefully, you'll be able to give them some of your tissue because your heart is going bad. And they'll take some of that tissue and they'll, they'll change, they'll make that, that, that nucleus, uh, they'll unspecialize those cells. And then they'll re-specialize them to become heart cells. So it's still your DNA, it's still you, but you're going to grow a heart. They're going to grow a heart for you. And then you'll go in a doctor's office. They'll take your old heart out and they'll put your new one in. And that heart that will have that new, those new cells ideally will have whole new telomeres. They'll have all the new cells, all the new, all everything brand new. So you have a brand new heart ready to go. So ideally that's an issue for your, your generation to be able to live a lot longer. That kind of technology is going to live, let your generation live a lot longer than mine will. Because you're going to have the technology, hopefully, and if it all seems to be moving along in that direction, that you'll be able to grow your own organs. A doctor will be able to grow them for you. Replace whatever part goes bad. You'll be able to take aging cells and, and, and replace them. Then the only question is, what are you going to do with your memory cells? How do you, how do you save those neurons from 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 uh, from their death if they have to or maybe maybe they don't have to die maybe we're able to to come up with different anti-aging techniques that save your neurons from getting older like things like from things like alzheimer's or, or just general dementia well that's it that's mitosis and uh, uh the next thing i'm going to send you is meiosis and then of course your labs all right have a good one